What are your fears? What are you afraid of? You know, when I reflected on this question, first I said, well, I'm not afraid of anything. But then the more I thought about it, I ended up with a list, a short list, but still I came up with a list of things I'm afraid of. I think sometimes maybe it's harder for men to admit that we have fears. We try to coach it, cover it with other things. Well, no, I don't like this, because we don't want to say, well, I'm afraid of this. Some people have fear of confrontation. Some people have fear of getting out of their house, fear of heights, flying in planes. Maybe we're afraid of God. We're afraid of losses in life. We are afraid of failure. I think there's many things that different people have different types of fears. But the one common fear for everyone is the fear of death. Because all of us, we're going to die one day. And I think whether we admit it or not, or think about it or not, we are afraid of death. Let's both go back now to the disciples. The gospel today starts by telling us that they were afraid. They were behind locked doors. Let us think a little bit, why are they afraid? It says because of the Jews. So let's talk about this a little bit. Now try to go back and think that you're one of those disciples, okay? So you've been with Jesus for three years. On Good Friday, Jesus was crucified and died. And that was the beginning of the Passover. That year, Passover happened to be on Saturday. So by Friday evening, everything shut down. As you know, Jews did not do any work on the Sabbath. And here you are in this room, in this house, with other disciples, and you're reflecting on what happened. You might be afraid of the Jewish authorities, not the Jews, because all those people were Jews. Jesus was a Jew. But you might be thinking, well, now if they did this to Jesus, they're going to come after us once the Sabbath is over. We are his disciples. What are they going to do to us? So your fear in the beginning is about what the authority is going to do to you. But then comes Sunday morning, and the women go to the tomb, and there's no Jesus. There's no body. And they come back and tell you the tomb was empty. I think starting that point, that Sunday morning, you have another fear, and maybe a greater fear. What if Jesus truly arose from the dead, like he said? What's he going to do to us? We abandoned him. We denied him. He told us everything, and we kept saying, no, 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 Lord, we'll never do this. And we did exactly what he said we're going to do. Won't you be afraid of seeing Jesus and having Jesus come to you and said, okay, let's have a talk here? It's pretty scary. And that's why Jesus comes to them that same night when they're behind locked doors and tells them, peace be with you. The first step that Jesus had to do with them is to reconcile with them again, to have them believe that they are forgiven. Jesus did not say, how did you do this to me? Didn't I tell you? Didn't I warn you? How could you treat me this way? He didn't come back to settle scores. Well, now you're going to get it. I'm going to show you my power. He comes and says, peace be with you. A week later, after the disciples, they, they rejoice. They've seen the Lord. A week later, they're still behind closed doors. You know, it's hard to accept sometimes God's forgiveness. It's hard to accept sometimes when people forgive us for what we have done. We always have doubt, did she really forgive me? Did he truly forgive me? Can God truly forgive me for what I have done? And that's why the second Sunday of Easter, after that last Sunday, on Easter Sunday, we focus on the joy of the resurrection, Jesus' victory over sin and death, 
Jesus opening the doors of heaven to all who believe in him, today we focus on God's divine mercy. St. John Paul II designated that second Sunday of Easter as divine mercy. The reason we could celebrate last Sunday in Easter is because of God's mercy, because Jesus died for our sins. And despite everything we do and have done, he continues to tell us, peace be with you. Now let's go back to those disciples. You know, there is that time period between the resurrection and Pentecost Sunday, right? We have 50 days, you know, a long period. And during that time, the disciples really were continuing their own life. I mean, if you read in John, the next chapter, he talks about how one day they went back to fishing as if nothing happened. After all this experience of Jesus, they just went back to fishing and they couldn't catch anything. But what's interesting that their fear of the Jews at that time, the authorities never materialized. The authorities didn't care about them anymore. They didn't go after them. They didn't even question, what did you do with Jesus' body? Did you steal it? So their fears really were not founded on reality. But what's interesting is after Pentecost, when they received the fullness of the Holy Spirit, and then they started talking and giving witness to Jesus, like we heard in that second reading, John, that led them to be exiled, led the other disciples to be thrown in jail, in jail put in prison, some of them killed. They had a reason to fear them because they're being persecuted. But they were not afraid. They continued to proclaim that Jesus who died on the cross rose from the dead. So when they were afraid, nothing happened to them. But they, when something was starting to happen to them, they were not afraid. What led to that transformation? The Holy Spirit. The words of Jesus, peace be with you. When we are at peace with the Lord, that peace will take away our fears. Because today and throughout centuries, many Christians, Catholics, in a way, yes, we believe Jesus rose from the dead, but we still live behind locked doors. We still live in this period between it's Easter Sunday, the resurrection, and Pentecost Sunday. We haven't really integrated in our lives the meaning of the resurrection. We just go back to our normal lives as if nothing happened. It was one day. Remember from the beginning of Lent, I told you Lent is not meant for us to just give up something and do something for 40 days so we can go back to it. It's meant for us to give up those things that keeps us imprisoned in the walls that we build because of our fears. Lent is meant for us to set us free because Jesus rose from the dead, because he has forgiven us our sins. We forget that Easter is about the forgiveness of our sins. Jesus died on the cross to forgive us our sins. And yet, we don't accept or truly trust that gift of peace that Jesus offers us. We still live behind locked doors. And as long as we're living in fear, we're not doing what Jesus asked the apostles, the disciples, and us to do. He said, peace be with you as the Father has sent me, I send you. He gives us a mission, a purpose, to proclaim peace in the, to the world. Peace because our Lord risen from the dead, because Jesus is our Lord and God, as Thomas says. But as long as we're living in fear, we just focus on ourselves. We never have that outward movement towards proclaiming that Jesus who died rose from the dead and now we can live in peace because his victory, his resurrection is the victory for us. We have nothing to fear anymore because he is with us and he's the Lord of life, of love, of mercy. 
You know, when you're inside a locked room, you're the only one who can open the door. Jesus is waiting outside the door, knocking for us to trust in his mercy and open that door and let him in. Let him in so he can lead us out, out of that room, out of that world that we constructed for ourselves, that virtual reality world, and go out to the real world and proclaim the good news. That's what divine mercy is all about. It's freedom. Freedom from sin, freedom from death, freedom from fear, so we can live truly as God's free children, filled with hope and joy of the Easter that one day we too will see Christ in heaven and live with him for all eternity.